And do I have a clicker? Yes. Very All right, great. Labacon. We've been involved with Labacon for six years now. I think it's been six years. And the most amazing thing about Labacon is how much this industry's changed over the last six years. And the rate of change is accelerating. So it's exciting to be a participant in this. Uh, early in my career, when I was at Microsoft, that's where I met my co-founder, I did, uh, we did research and distributed systems and high performance computing. But my role as program manager was really more of a technical communications person. I did a lot of project management and then taking our research and putting it in a format that we could push it out to the product teams. So I've been involved in this field from the beginning of my career. And it's really exciting to see how the rate of change has really accelerated over the last six years. A little bit about myself. Uh, like Jack said, I'm one of the founders of MindTouch and the CEO. And MindTouch, we do uh, customer self-service software. And we're serving millions daily. Now, I want to start with a question. And we don't need to do hands, because then you feel bad if you don't get the answer right. But true or false? the content jobs are going to be completely automated. And uh, this is through automation and artificial intelligence, we will be eliminating all content jobs. I agree. I think it's false. Now, uh, the, the rate at which we are automating out jobs is remarkable. And I, I know that adjacent positions, which I'll talk about, two content creators absolutely will be automated out through artificial intelligence. However, the idea that content creators are going to have their jobs automated out is, is false, in, in my opinion. And there's a lot of reasons why. Now, I will say that, and we're already seeing this over the last six years, that the nature of these jobs is going to change dramatically. We're already seeing it. We're moving from a role of people who are creating content to people who are really more focused on metrics related to that content. And this new role really is about affecting every single stage of the customer journey. So we're going from a role that was a technical writer or a documentation manager, where the title itself speaks to the breadth of content being created, to now we're seeing people who are strategists, web strategists, content strategists, um, I think of content strategy a little bit more on the marketing side. And through LavaCon and participants actively in LavaCon over the last six years, the, the trend that we're seeing emerge is a new title, a new role that's really about content experience and how that content experience is mapped across the customer journey. And it's one that moves what previously was a position related to compliance, and was a cost center into one that has a material and profound impact on revenue generation, and in a measurable way. So there's really three metrics, just think one, two, three, that these, this role, this emerging role, is having an impact on. First is customer renewal and upsell. Second is customer acquisition. And third, third is really about brand engagement. And brand engagement is really critical to above two. Now, if you are not measuring the impact on one of these three today, you need to do that quickly. Because if you're not thinking about your role in terms of one of these three metrics, then you're quickly becoming obsolete. And you're in a position that can be either outsourced or automated. Now, I want to introduce what all of you already know, because you're LavaCon participants, is the role that we're seeing emerge, the content experience manager. And it's strategic. It has a measurable impact on the organization. So what are the key characteristics of this role? The hallmarks of this role is, one, it's customer first. You think outside in, not inside out. You're thinking about the customer's experience. It's metric driven, one, two, three, right? It's cross-departmental. I know that's going to be a recurring theme at LavaCon this week, is spanning the departments. How do you bridge across multiple departments? And then third, it's really about having holistic thinking, thinking about the customer journey. Now, there's five trends driving this, five irreversible, irrefutable, cannot get away from trends that are driving this shift in market from content creators to one that is really more about 
content experience in the customer journey. I want to go through each one of them individually. Number one, self-service is undeniably the number one preferred channel, whether it's for support or when somebody's in the act of making a purchase and they want to understand the product that they're going to purchase. It is undeniable. So all the vendors that sell support ticketing systems or call center software, forget it. The channel we all prefer is self-service. And I'd, you see it in the stats, but like right here, 79% of customers prefer self-service. And then look at the stat beneath, 33% would rather clean a toilet than wait for support. Now, if it's 79% of people prefer self-service, I have to question, what are the other 21% doing? They don't have internet access or something. I don't know. Because there's nobody on earth who says, I want to file a support ticket or call into support. Nobody does, period. So the second one, and this is the one that is, by the way, I'll say, this self-service one is so obvious. It's so obvious, and yet very few people think about it. It's really, really obvious, right? Of course people want to self-serve. Now, the second one is a little bit less obvious. If you think about the most successful businesses, they're businesses that have baked into their product or service the ability to learn from their customers at scale. So on the left, you see companies that failed because they didn't do that. Or like in the case of Toys R Us, they outsourced it to Amazon to do it for them, which was a huge mistake for them. On the right, you see companies that have baked into their offerings the ability to learn from their customers at scale to inform their product offerings or to create new products. Now, if you think about it, survival in business is determined principally on your ability to scale your understanding of your customers. Now, think about most of the businesses on the planet, right? Whirlpool, Electrolux, Fisher & Paykel, they make appliances. Most businesses that have been successful over the last 100 years are successful because they set up distribution and sales networks through third parties. So their strength in their business was by having this massive sales and distribution network. It is now their Achilles heel. It is their greatest weakness because they're incapable of understanding their customer at scale. They've outsourced that to distribution and sales networks. What happens when Amazon comes out with a washer and dryer that they sell for, no doubt, at a loss? I spend every single day interacting with Amazon. I never interact with these brands. That's changing. These brands are going through digital transformations because they recognize that they have to drive direct engagement with their customers. And if they don't, they're going to go out of business in the next five to eight years. 100-year-old company. They're going to go out of business in the next five to eight years if they cannot drive direct engagement and understanding of their customers. Why do we have such an affinity for Amazon? We all spend so much time with them every single day. Amazon Music, Amazon Video. We shop on Amazon. It's all of those different engagement points that drives familiarity, that drives affinity. So familiarity drives affinity. That's all based on brand engagement. What does this have to do with content? Everything. It has everything to do with content because all of you in here are responsible for the content that drives brand engagement. Where does it come from? It comes from search engines. It comes from all of those discrete interaction points with your customers. So everybody in here is one of the most strategically important people at your companies. You guys are all so critically important to the futures of your companies. Point three, this is trend number three that's driving this huge shift. Success is dominating support. It used to be the case that the metrics that mattered were customer satisfaction scores through the support channels, mean time to response, first call resolution. Forget those. Those are just indicators. What really matters is, first of all, 90% of a business's revenue comes from their existing customer base. 90%. Now, what matters more? Your first call resolution or the fact that the customer bought from you again, that they renewed from you? So what's driving the shift? Well, first of all, it's the realization that content is critically important to a customer's onboarding, and that has a direct impact on whether they're going to buy from you again. Another thing that's a big factor is 
subscription-based businesses. Every single business on the planet, including Electrolux and Whirlpool, are coming up with new models to drive subscription-based business models because they recognize if they don't quickly, they're going to be out of business in the next five to eight years. GE, subscription-based business model. Electrolux, they make washers and dryers and vacuum cleaners. They're coming up with subscription-based business models. This is what everybody in business recognizes. We've got to drive direct engagement. We've got to focus on customer success because if we don't, they're not going to renew and buy more from us. What does that have to do with content? Tell me, guys, what does that have to do with content? Everything! It has everything to do with content. <clears throat> and your content not only drives the engagement, because how much engagement am I going to get with my washer and dryer? Probably not, a, well, hopefully not too much. Now, not only does your content drive engagement around the brand, and that has a direct impact on affinity and familiarity and the likelihood that I'm going to buy from the company again, but if you take the content and it's well structured, which most of you guys are doing inside your offices, but you don't publish it that way. You've got to publish it that way so that you can get maps of micro moments and then drive that back into your marketing channels or your customer renewal channels or your sales channels so that they understand what is the content and topics that we need the most to drive engagement that improves conversions through the e-commerce experience or that our salespeople need to accelerate their deal flow. Everything to do with content. So, the next point, there's new channels. You guys are already all familiar with this, but here's some things that you might not be familiar with. Um, you guys should know that Google reports that more than 60% of their searches start on mobile. Why are you guys putting up PDFs? What the hell's up with that? You can't read that on a mobile device, and you have no analytics. 60% and growing of searches originate from a mobile device. Here's one that you might not be familiar with. 20 to 25 percent of searches are from voice, not just on Android, but on Microsoft's taskbar, voice-activated searches. You think they're going to open a PDF file? You guys already know every page is page one. You can't send them a PDF file and say, turn to page 522. The next is, for anybody, just look at people under 30. What is the primary user interface that they're using? Anybody? Cell, cell phone, sure, but what is the interface on their cell phone? It's a conversational interface. It's text-based most of the time. It's conversational. It's a chatbot-like interface. It's all conversational. That's what everybody's using. They're not making phone calls. They're texting. They're using Snapchat. So what do you think these people in their 20s and early 30s are going to expect when they start engaging with brands? A PDF file? Because that's obviously not going to work for a conversational interface. Then Internet of Things, right? This is a massive growing uh, um, market. How do you deliver content across network appliances? Right? There's, there's a whole lot of opportunities there. And you guys, just think about the way you structure it when you author it. Now you've got to deliver it out to the market that way. And then lastly, augmented reality and virtual reality. Uh, this is a mass, I was surprised by 162 billion in the next five years? That's a massive industry. Are we going to be interfacing PDF files through our AR goggles? Probably not. All right, number five. This is the, the boogeyman, right? AI and automation. By 2020, 85% of customer support interactions will be automated. So AI is not coming for your jobs. They're coming for customer support jobs. But in order for them to take those customer support jobs, all of you need to provide them the content. You can automate the creation of content in a knowledge base that's an error code answer as a byproduct of the support interactions through ticket management that gets saved into a knowledge base, and then the next time the AI will serve up the correct knowledge base article. But that's great when it's break fix. What about training and onboarding? What about documentation for the product? What about best practices, how-tos? That's where all of you need to be thinking is, hey, the knowledge base stuff that support's doing, great. They can do that as a byproduct of KCS until AI automates them out of a job. You guys are all thinking about, hey, how do I achieve a specific business outcome with this product or service? That's the kind of content that you need to be thinking about. 
So being the content experience manager, the director of content experience, what does it mean? What does it mean to be that? It means being customer first. It's not thinking about feature coverage. Uh, it's, guys, honestly, it's, it's, grammar's not that important. I know that that's sacrosanct to say in this room, but really, if it's in a PDF that nobody's going to read, how important is it? It's about getting the right piece of information in a micro moment delivered across the customer journey. It's about being metric driven. One, two, three. Renewal and upsells. How much budget do you guys think you get when you go and say, hey, look, I can have a big impact on our ability to drive renewal and upsells. In fact, I'm going to provide you the exact map of micro content that our top customers who renew with us and buy more product from us consume during the ownership cycle so that we can push that through our marketing channels to drive more upsells and renewals. That's the kind of thing that a content experience specialist thinks about. What about customer acquisition? Hey, VP of sales. Hey, chief revenue officer. Here's a map of micro content that your salespeople need based on what industry they're selling to, what buying persona. And then brand engagement. Hey, I doubled the amount of website traffic we drive with my content. All of you guys can do that. I see it on a daily basis inside of our own customer base. All of you are capable of doing that with your content. And it's all this long tail SEO search. So it's all the things like, I'll give you an example. Cisco, there's some people from Cisco here. Cisco Meraki, they make um, Wi-Fi routers and networking equipment. Any search term, generic search terms, doesn't even mention their brand. Does not even mention their brand. Configuring a virtual private network. They are the featured snippet on Google because of how they've done their content. So this is the highest value traffic. It's intercepting engagement from competitors and driving them into their marketing funnel, into their sales pipeline. So in order to achieve this, though, you've got to be cross-departmental. And I know there's going to be a bunch of sessions around being cross-departmental this week and really dig into those. And then uh, lastly, be holistic in your thinking. Again, it's about the customer journey. The customer doesn't care which department made it. They don't care why you have a support center, a knowledge base, a training center that are all jinky and hacked together and file-based and static files with no analytics, no personalization. They don't care about that. You guys need to care about that. You need to fix that. So next steps. Put the customer's needs first. Really think about that. If you look at what drives engagement, obviously it's going to be the search engines. But how do you rank highly in the search engines? Google rewards content that people stay engaged with. So when SolarWinds, I don't know if they're here, they take their time on site from 35 seconds to 12 minutes time on site. That has a big impact in their search ratings, in their search rankings. It helps them to show up in the top search results not just for their company branded content, but for anything related to their uh, product categories or service categories. So really think about how do I drive the most engagement in terms of time on site, page views. If you put up a PDF for some static files, it looks like a bounce to Google. So you, don't, you get deranked. You get lowered in your SEO. Um, think about things in terms of micro moments. Google's got a ton of great research on micro moments. Google micro moments, and there's a whole Google Think uh, micro site about this, and there's a whole Gartner talks about atomic content. So look at atomic content, look at micro moments. Those are two good buzzwords to look at. All of you guys already know this is every page is page one. Uh, then think about spanning silos. Right? Think about, hey, how much of your content is being used by support? Because if it's a file, I can tell you they are not going to open that up. They will never. Instead, they recreate a crappy version of your content. And they're complaining that they can't find it, but it's, you guys have already produced it somewhere. Or they're complaining like, hey, I spend all my time on the calls training people because I can't find the right training information. And it's there. It's just not in a format that a support agent can consume because they've got to move fast. First call response. Meantime to resolution. All right, so calls to action. There's a maturity model. There's a webinar with a bunch of stuff up there at that link. If it's totally technology agnostic, you can jump into that. It talks about unify your content. What are the different content types? Uh, extend the content across the customer journey by integrations into all of the customer touch points, and then the kinds of reports that you can build to inform the different departments. Also, there's additional resources at the MindTouch blog. You can look at my LinkedIn, too. There's other articles up there as well. But the key things I, I mentioned before, atomic content, micro moments, great third-party resources as well other than MindTouch. 
And then just really think about how you can be an agent for change. So, like I said, the first thing is easy, easy. How can your content impact and improve the support channel? That's an easy thing to do when you get back to the office. Go talk to whomever your knowledge manager is and say, hey, how do I get content in a format that you can consume? Or what do you need? What format do you need? How can I be helpful to you? Then identify any other department to engage with. Training. They probably have together some Drupal site and you guys combining your efforts and blending content together delivers an exceptional experience for the customers. Think about blending content types. And then of course, share your takeaways with your peers and of, please share your takeaways and successes back with everybody here at LavaCon. And I'm sure there's a hashtag there that Jack provided, but Jack will provide some more guidance around how you all as a community can share with one another. Thank you all for your time today. So Lost got her own mic, so you can just do mic at the back.